I think we've all been over to that friend's house that just finished off some major DIY renovations. Had a look around and thought to ourselves, wow, this is absolutely terrible. As a lifelong finishing carpenter, I'm here today to finally put an end to the ongoing raging DIY baseboard crisis. I bring you the four fatal DIY baseboard mistakes and how to overcome them like an absolute champion. Now I've definitely done this myself a few times and I've seen it dozens of times with different homeowners over the years and that is removing the old baseboards and tearing the paper. And once you get this paper torn, the mistake that a lot of people make here is they just coat over this with a little bit of wall filler. What you wanna do is remove any of the loose bits, hit this with some alcohol-based primer, and then hit it with some wall filler, sand it down, paint over that, and you're back to square one. So to get baseboards off without damaging everything and tearing the paper on the drywall, there's two primary tools that you need one of these little flat bars and a utility knife. If you don't have one of these flat bars, these are made by Richards. You can usually find them in the paint department or pretty much any local hardware store. If you don't have one, get one. They're invaluable for all kinds of things. So now the reason that the paper tears is because most baseboards are caulked along the top. So what you're gonna need to do, take the utility knife. Now with these utility knives, don't put the blade out too far. What can end up happening is the blade will snap. You're putting downward pressure and you could actually jab your finger in. I've seen it happen to guys before. So just put the blade out like, you know, about like that far is pretty nice. So go ahead and cut the top. And once you've got that cut, the next thing is to take this nice super flat bar and stick it in on kind of the easiest end to start with. Here I have a butt end, so I'll start over here. And then once you have that in and you start prying away, you want to keep your eye on the top edge the whole time and see if you can see any spots that need a little more cutting. And then just slowly work the baseboard off with the bar. Now this next one is so simple to avoid, yet extremely catastrophic if you don't. Basically, anytime that you're gonna replace your baseboards, there are two fundamental principles that you cannot ignore. Number one, when you get a new baseboard, you need to get one that is at least the same height, if not higher than the old baseboard. Now, where people run into trouble, like for example, in this bathroom here, I'm gonna be ripping out this tile and replacing it with vinyl plank. The vinyl plank's not gonna be as thick as the old floor, so if I were to try to reuse the baseboard or a new baseboard that was the same width as the old baseboard, now with the new floor, you go ahead to put the baseboard in and yeah, it's gonna be a quarter inch lower than the old baseboard. And that's an absolute no-go. There's no way, you, you can't caulk that. It's perfectly okay to come up to the existing line, but under no circumstances do you wanna go below it. And the second thing, you absolutely have to consider the thickness of the door casings that you're working with. All the door casings in this house are 9 16 thick, so you need to get a baseboard that's preferably a half inch or less. Under no circumstances do you wanna get some 5 8 or 3 quarter inch material here. What's gonna end up happening, you slap that on and then you're sticking past the door casing with a butt end, it looks terrible. Yeah, you could 45 this back, but it's still gonna look Mickey Mouse, rinky dink. You just don't wanna do it. Let's be honest here, getting beautiful miters can take a lot of practice, but to be honest, this tip is gonna cut down your time by about 80%. And that is anytime that you're dealing with baseboards and drywall, you have to factor in the mud buildup on outside and inside corners. If you throw a square on the outside corner, it's almost always gonna be an acute angle, more than 90 degrees because of the mud buildup. On the inside corners, it's the opposite because you have the buildup on the inside. So what you wanna do is go ahead and for this outside corner, instead of cutting the baseboard 45, you're gonna to wanna to cut it 45 and three quarter degrees to start off with and see how that works out. 
90% of the time that's gonna work just beautifully. And then when it comes to cutting the inside corner, yeah, if you're gonna be using flat stock, you can definitely just butt the baseboards together, which is essentially coping. But if you're using a profile molding and you're not coping them together and you're doing a miter, go ahead and cut that one 44 and a quarter degrees. You're gonna be way ahead of the game there and your miters are gonna look damn near professional. Now this is a pretty poor example, but it's all I have to show you in my house. But this is something I've seen literally hundreds of times over at other people's places, and that is giant gaps under the baseboard. Now the problem here oftentimes happens with tile floors or even hardwood floors. Now there's a couple scenarios when it comes to gaps. I'll run you through two quick tips to overcome each of them. The first one is when you have a giant hump, it's kind of the easiest situation to deal with. All you really need to do is level off the baseboard, maybe shim it and get it somewhat level. It doesn't have to be perfect. Then find yourself a shim that is roughly the same size as the gap under both the sides of the baseboard. Then just scribe the middle hump, trim it down with either a belt sander, a disc grinder, table saw, block plane, orbital sander, anything you can find that's gonna be able to do a nice job sanding that down to the scribe line. Now the more difficult situation and one that tricks a lot of people is when you have a big dip in your baseboard. What you wanna do there, you don't wanna get into scribing both sides of the baseboard because all of a sudden then you scribe down one end of the baseboard that's connected to other pieces and you're sanding and cutting down the whole run, which can be a pain in the butt. What you wanna do is take the easy side in this situation here, this baseboard terminates into the fireplace. So there's a, a dip in the middle. So I'm gonna take the left-hand side. I'm not even gonna worry about leveling the baseboard and I'm just gonna take a shim that's roughly the same width as the gap. So it's about a 16th of an inch. Take the shim, grab a pencil and just mark that all the way along, sand it down push it down, the gap's eliminated, and then when you're coming into the rest of your run, you're back to full height in the corner, so you don't have to worry about sanding any of those down, unless there's more gaps over there, of course. And hey, if you wanna learn a little bit more about scribing baseboards, I've got a cabinet kick video that covers a lot of the basics right over here. We'll see you over there. Thanks for watching. Boom.